Hey everyone, welcome back. It's me again, Ian, with more Audi TT Mark II content. In this video, what we'll be looking at is replacing your rear view mirror, as well as upgrading it for an HBA or high beam assist unit. Now, if you've never seen an HBA unit before, the main difference is that it has a front facing camera on it. So now we're in the car, I'll show you the parts that we'll be replacing uh, for the HBA mirror to be installed. So basically, this is the regular one, as you'd all be familiar with. So you can see that, um, actually you can just see it from the side here. That's the normal mount and it's got the rain sensor underneath, yeah? So that's what's going to be changed. What needs to be removed is going to be the A-pillar here and that light and your center light so that you're able to then run the new two CAN bus wires up and around and down to the CAN gateway, which is going to be here on a right-hand drive vehicle. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently now because I have some CAN bus um, lines back here because of Color MFA. But if you don't have Color MFA, which is gonna be a lot of people, um, that's what you wanna do, remove the left side a pillar and glove box to then get access to all that area to be able to run those two extra wires. The rest of the wiring is going to be done up here. All right, so I'll sit you guys down somewhere where you can have a good view of everything and we'll get started. Now a really important thing to remember here when you're removing the A-pillar is to pull up once those clips have been unfastened and not to pull it towards the back of the car, otherwise you might break it. Another aspect to remember are that these four fasteners are holding the A-pillar in. To know which side of the light you need to push down on with your trim tool, uh, you'll see that there's like a little indent on this side and there's a little flat area here which is going to indicate to you which side that little spring is on but that you're not pushing the light down on the incorrect side and potentially going to break it. So there's that little spring there which for me was on the inboard side of the headliner. Oh, I've forgotten how to do this. It's been a while. Okay, that's good. side there's like a little spring it's pinged off on that side that would usually go that way and that's what I was trying to release but you kind of heard it ping off on the way there so I'll just put that back in so these are all for the um, map lights 
the reading light, sorry. And the rest of the wiring is going to be in there. So it's already there, but I'm just opening all of this up to gain access because remember we have to add those two extra wires. Now I want to just refocus you guys to the review mirror. Now I usually like to take this trim off. Oops. Usually this kind of like just comes off by itself. There we go. So I've just pulled it up towards that way in order to get it off cleanly. Then you can see the plugs that we need to deal with. This one here, mainly. And so the review mirror rotates to the left and you're able to have it sort of dangle there a little bit. And this grey plug that you see there, which is going to be the normal sort of situation in most cars, is um, has a little clip that it clips into in this sort of housing. So you can unplug that. Now if all you needed to do was replace your rear view mirror if it wasn't working anymore, like that little green light wasn't on there and the auto dimming didn't function, this is where you need to finish. But if you do want to learn how to wire up the HBA high beam assist unit, just continue on. But for now, remember to like and subscribe if you like my content, it really helps me out. All right, so I've come to a bit of a stumbling block here where um, <laughs> I was expecting more wires to be in this plug. But what I'll do is I'll take a picture with my phone so that you can see that I indeed only, this is the six pin plug and there's definitely only three wires coming out of it and not six. So that's a bit unexpected, but that's fine. Um, I'll be, I think what I'll do now is I'll add in the extra wires here for the anti-dazzle mirrors for the doors where I'm just gonna remove that metal clip. It's gonna be a bit fiddly, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and do this. Okay. So it's gonna work really systematically here, I think, and do one plug for one, one for one. So one goes into one, two goes into two, and then number three, we'll go into a spare slot number seven in the eight pin plug. And the eight pin plug is actually easier to disassemble than this little six pin one. Six, the six pin one has like a little door sort of mechanism on it that's not as easy to pick open as it is on the eight pin, which has a nice sort of flap that goes up. Okay, so number one, let's take you out. It wants to come out. Okay, and then that'll go into here. Where's number one? Uh, why? Come on. Is it a different size? Ooh, is it slightly longer? I think it is. Slightly longer version of this bloody pin. So this is the final configuration that I'm going to run with for the 8 pin plug. So I'm leaving space there for 1 and 2 for the power and ground to be spliced into um, at the windscreen. And then number 3 there's can bus um, high. 4 and 5 are for anti-dazzle signal to the doors. Um, what's that? Number five. That's going to be going to the interior light. Um, pin number three at the interior light so that the mirror is dim when the interior lights are on. Uh, so that's pin six. And then pin seven is empty. Pin eight is going to be our can high. And for ultimate clarity, here is the pinout on a spreadsheet.
All right, so you're gonna see everything is a bit of a shambles right now. But this is before. Okay, the cost is out. We've got some twisted um, pairs there, which is my hand bus lines. I'm gonna tap into it, that plug or those wires. And what I'll do is I'll run a line of wires from here across going down and to here. You can see that I put in the 8 pin plug here and those wires that I'm going to extend and stick out there. Four of those wires will join to where the piece of pairs I'm going to use the orange um, coloured ones for hand box and then this twisted pair will be for the anti-dazzle signal. You can see it runs across and down. I stuck it in through the other end bit of wiring tape and it comes down through there and then you can plug it through here. If you're going to do it from the passenger side, pretty much the same thing. Up, across, down the eighth pillar to behind the glove box, which is where the can gateway is and you can type into that. Okay, now I'm just continuing to prep this wiring and I'm just going to take a picture of what I've done with the four lines here and flash it up on the screen. So they're the wires for CAN bus, powertrain CAN bus and the signals for mirror dimming for either side which go to the door modules. The next bit that I'm doing is extending that um, interior light signal which plugs in at number three which is like the yellow flat plug. So this plug here, the um, yellow cover just slides off like that hopefully Hold on, sorry about this um, really bad lighting, but it comes off, slides off nice and easy. And now all I'm going to do is with one of the ones, with one of the pins that I've got from the 8 pin plug that I need to put into here, big, um, position number one, I'm just going to swap these pins around because that fits into this but this doesn't fit into that. That will fit into the eight pin plug here. So nice and easy. I'm just gonna, uh, let's see what length. Like I really don't need that much length for here. It's just really like, just ensuring that I've got enough um, of a tail so that I can get some strippers up there. Mm, let's do that. And that's the power. Um, power for the for the rear view mirror. That's yeah. So that's the power for the rear view mirror that I've just cut. They need soldering together to then plug into here, and I can join it onto that that wire there. And then I'll need to solder that to here to then be able to plug this new power into position number one at the eight pin plug. Okay. Ooh. Hopefully the strippers can strip this little tiny little piece of wire up here. Ooh. Let's see, come on, we can do it. Not ideal, but oh, yeah, that's... that's tricky. Got it. And that's going to convert the plug to the correct size for the 8 pin plug because sealing me so it was just going to be easy and unpin and repin but no they are different of course
So that quick little test confirms that there's power to the mirror, but we also want to make sure that the CAN bus installation is correct. So you want to fire up VCDS and just look for high beam assist in that installation menu. Now you'll probably notice that if you do an auto scan that the CAN gateway will report an error. So the way to fix this is to install a 7N0 CAN gateway unit and activate address number 20, which is the high beam assist. All right, so that's how you wire up your HBA high beam assist review mirror. That's one part of the installation. There are other components that you need to install, which I'll cover in future videos. So the next part is to install the non-latching indicator stalk where it springs back into the center position and it doesn't lock when you activate the high beams. After that will be installation of the CECM to BCM upgrade, which is another requirement for a fully functioning HBA review mirror. But for now, if you like my content, please remember to like and subscribe. It really does help me out. And let me know what you'd want to see me do for an upcoming video as well. Mm -hmm.